tonight's uh, Venture Crowd Fireside discussion. My name is Jason Kennewell. I'm the Head of Capital here at Venture Crowd. Um, so thank you for joining, for joining us for this uh, Venture Talk Fireside chat. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Venture Crowd is actually a digital investment platform for alternative assets, including venture capital and property. We have over 74,000 registered members who have invested 312 or plus $312 million across a range of ventures since we started uh, with over $50 million invested in FY23 alone. Um, most importantly, we are a purpose-driven business. This means that we only work with companies that have purpose at their core. And the way we assess that is by ensuring that each company we have on our platform is addressing one or more of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Now, if you want any more information uh, on what we do and on particularly on this uh, this offer tonight that, that we'll be talking about Mogul Ferry Road, please visit the Venture Crowd website. Uh, the deal page uh, is not public on this particular offer just yet, but I will share a link to it in the chat here this evening. So feel free to, to click on that and you can uh, have a read through there, fire any questions away tonight. There is a Q&A button at the bottom uh, of your screen. We will allow time towards the end of this um, this webinar for Brad and David to answer any of those questions. Um, and if you wish, you can actually invest at any time during the webinar uh, on the link that I provide. Uh, I'd just like to um, introduce our panelists this evening. So hosting tonight, I have David Whitting. He is Venture Crowd's Head of Property. David leads um, the property team. He is actually a former lawyer and a senior property development executive with over 25 years of experience with some of Australia's leading property organisations. David was previously the Queensland General Manager for Growcon, State Director of Multiplex Developments and Project Director for Lang O'Rourke. David specialises in strategy acquisitions, disposals, structuring project initiation and approvals of institutional grade real estate assets across the commercial, residential, retail and hospitality categories. Um, Tough gig to follow there, Brad, but we've got, we've got Brad Bay is uh, uh, Venture Crowd Senior Development Manager, boasting over 29 years of experience in project uh, property development and has specialised in infill land subdivisions, townhouse and apartment projects in Brisbane over the past 20 years. As a former partner, General Manager of Echo Point Properties, he supervised the sale, delivery and settlement of over 750 widgets. His proven track record includes successful consultancy roles for Gallery Group, and he currently runs his own boutique development firm, uh, Bramick, um, focused on innovative property solutions, which include the development of luxury townhouses in Albany Creek and an eco-friendly small lot subdivision in Castledine, showcasing his ex expertise and commitment to excellence. Um, welcome tonight, Brad and Dave. Um, okay. With that, I'd like to hand over to you, Dave. Thanks, Jason. Um... Uh, I do understand uh, that we've only got uh, 30 minutes for this session today, so 20, 25 left. So we will uh, proceed with um, some alacrity on it. So um, what we'll be doing is we'll be going through the uh, particular property and the opportunity. Um, we'll recap the, the status of where we are. Um, and Jason at the end will uh, talk about the raise. Um, of course, anybody who wants to invest can uh, do so at any time, including including during this um, webinar. So <clears throat> this is a very limited opportunity. It's not like our um, uh, our uh, usual uh, equity equity raises, which might um, take several months and several million dollars. This is a, quite a short, uh, sharp one, and we'll we'll give the reasons for that um, uh, and what we're aiming what we're aiming to do. But in the interim, I think we'll talk about some of the rationale um, and the reasons about why we have uh, put our foot on this opportunity. So um, a little bit about the NDIS property sector and the opportunities in this space. There, there was a, uh, there's a specialist disability accommodation market insights report by a, a group called Summer Foundation. Uh, and it found the existing supply of SDA needs uh, needed to grow by 60% to house 28,000 people that the NDIS uh, expects to fund. Um, as everybody knows, just from the news, the uh, uh, requirements of the ND NDIS are kind of growing uh, exponentially. For those who don't know, um, the NDIS, <clears throat> excuse me, funds 
what we call SDA, Specialist Disability Accommodation. Uh, it does so in a number of uh, different different categories. And so effectively, it's a, a, a government-backed um, but individual-led uh, uh, opportunity. So what that means is that no longer does government uh, try and um, fit people into um, uh, you know, squares into round holes, um, but the people themselves um, have the ability to choose uh, their accommodation. Uh, and as long as it meets the, uh, the particular uh, uh, quite exacting requirements of the SDA, SDA accommodation, um, then uh, the, the rebate is effectively given. So the report uh, that I talked about before indicated another 33,200 people um, with very high support needs um, will require uh, SDA, SDA accommodation on top of the 17,500 already in this form of housing. So only one third of the market has been catered for in just the very high support uh, category. So there are a number of other categories. Uh, unfortunately, of course, uh, of the 33,200 people, some 6,200 people are under 64 um, uh, residing in aged care. And there are 6,000 young Australians who are living in aged care facilities due to a lack of housing options. And of course, uh, the very famous Young Care was, uh, was a sp specific organisation uh, formed to cater for that uh, particular particular need. Uh, and again, once again, unfortunately, that, that number of uh, uh, young Australians who need to be uh, housed in these kind of facilities um, are increasing by about 50 a week. Uh, so SIL, S-I-L, Supported Independent Living Homes, require no special design, but a service by um, a supported independent living provider. Uh, and those might include respite care accommodation, young care, aged care, and things like that. Um, NDIS spending is uh, going to be increasing by about $700 million a year um, when, the, when the scheme's fully implemented with the SDA counting for the majority of it. Um, the shift from the kind of previous grants-based funding, which I talked about to a market-based system, um, where individuals have control over their own funding will create a $5 billion disability housing market over the next five years. So as you can see, the demand for the product is, is quite incredible. <clears throat> um, there's been uh, very little uh, new build stock. Um, there is uh, very little refurbished stock going on. Um, uh, most of the uh, accommodation that you will see in this sector are individual houses. And when you're doing that, of course, uh, it's, it's very hard to kind of meet that demand. The um, SDA accommodation provided um, is provided within the categories of improved livability, fully accessible, high physical support, um, robust and high physical uh, and robust, um, uh, robust support. Uh, there are different levels of build um, and with the high physical support and robust, uh, often there needs to be a very small apartment for uh, carers built within the system as well. So look, we uh, we were presented this um, opportunity um, uh, uh, by, by another group. Um, we will take the benefit of the option over the land, which sits there for 18 months. Uh, effectively, we'll get the uh, uh, look to get the approval, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, uh, the um, information that we've got in relation to that approval to date, um, and then we will look to uh, on sell the opportunity. So, um, let's talk potentially about uh, uh, interest in the sector by investors. So, cause in a paper um, entitled "Specialist Disability Accommodation and Emerging Asset Class for Investors." Uh, as far back as September 2020, forecast the emerging asset class um, as being uh, as consisting of returns that are significantly higher than those of traditional residential housing market, which is, of course, what makes it attractive. And also, of course, um, the fact that it is federal government backed. Uh, it's a unique investment opportunity, um, uh, but will require uh, a, a multiplicity of um, strategies to resolve the undersupply. Um, so perhaps um, what we might do um, 
is to talk about this specific um, opportunity. So uh, I'm going to uh, bring Brad in at this point to um, uh, work with me to uh, give you the, uh, the the picture on effectively how we came uh, about the opportunity and formulated um, uh, what we're going to the market for. So Brad, uh, we might get you in now to talk about the uh, the opportunity with Mogul Ferry Road, how it came about, what we're doing, um, perhaps some of the consultants that we're working with who are giving us professional advice on this, the, the history of the development approvals on the site, um, sure. which give us confidence uh, in terms of, of how we're proceeding. Look, absolutely, Dave. Look, I guess uh, Mogul Ferry Road came about. Uh, we were searching for uh, affordable housing options, uh, which is obviously a, a big buzz void. In, in, in the industry right now, but also NDIS and SDA. So we stumbled across uh, the opportunity through, through a uh, connection uh, and discovered uh, quickly that there was an existing approval for some 205 odd apartments and uh, townhouses on the site. Uh, and whilst it wouldn't stack up as a traditional property development uh, yeah, in, in that location, and was probably why, the reason why it, um, it didn't get off the ground in the first place, the more we started looking at the opportunities in the SDA and NDIS space, we realised that um, with that sort of um, capacity, there was a potential you know, in that location to uh, put a, a development together. Uh, fr from there, just talking to some more connections, we discovered an operator uh, who uh, instantly uh, flagged an interest in the project. Um, and we started sort of pulling together a consultant team from there. And the, uh, the leading one uh, is TBS Architects. Who are very experienced in the uh, in the apartment space, as well as the NDIS and SDA um, you know, space to design around those projects. So, as part of that, you know, we've sort of been um, putting our scheme together uh, for some 216 uh, apartments across six buildings, with the potential for some mixed use uh, commercial and retail beneath several of the buildings. Uh, obviously, the the parcel itself is uh, yeah, significant uh, on the banks of the Brisbane River. Uh, a lot of it is, is unusual below the floodplain, but we've got significant um, you know, area, some 1.7 hectares above the flood um, zones where we're able to place the building safely from, from any um, issues uh, in that regard. So I guess the, the next point in time for us is um, we're just waiting for confirmation of pre-lodgement with Ipswich City Council to get in front of them, um, pitch our scheme, and then start um, marching forward through the the DA phase. Thanks, Brad. And perhaps um, uh, the import, one of the most important names you talked about there was um, uh, the operator, Victoria's Community Foundation. Uh, perhaps you can give us a little bit of a, um, a, a CV uh, uh, of Victorious and also how we plan um, to use Victorious as part of the, uh, as part of the opportunity. Okay. Um, in stumbling across Victorious, uh, you know, they've been flying under the radar and uh, we've been digging deep into their operation. They have several uh, core businesses which actually back the Victorious um, Foundation as a not-for-profit. Not they've got cleaning, training, uh, as well as in-home services for aged care uh, and disabled uh, across southeast Queensland. So, um, yeah, they're prepared to sign a lease to basically take up the entirety of, of the project, um, obviously underpinned by federal um, government funded um, rental schemes uh, and they want to diversify I guess the the product in there uh, as part of that uh, they're a small management team but so uh, we, we've been through uh, their operation with, with a fine tooth comb thus far and they've got all of the compliance uh, you know, measures in place uh, extremely professional and uh, their accountant and, and board member uh, Peter Carney it is uh, is also a director of several um, you know institutions like Safe Places for Children who have got 900 employees, so that they're well versed in you know government compliant uh, schemes for for renting and for aged care etc. Yeah, and Peter Carney for anybody um, who wants to look look him up is a is a well credentialed, well known, um, long term, uh, you know Brisbane uh, accountant of repute. Um, who sits um, within the organisation uh, there, uh, and we've we've uh, had the fortune of meeting the entire management team um, and going through um, the the demand for the project. Um, you know the the rental capacity, um, uh, and you know stress testing the model um, for that. 
So Brad, um, perhaps you can give us a little bit of a um, uh, an idea of what the next uh, you know eighteen odd months uh, looks like in terms of uh, a little bit of a you know a program of, of of getting through council and then and then getting out to the market. Well, the uh, the scheme as it stands uh, at this point in time is actually code accessible. Uh, however, obviously, there's a lot of technical aspects that we have to run through, um, namely flood hydraulics, uh, obviously, um, including the likes of commercial and retail within an apartment uh, building, which is potentially open to the public. At this point in time, we, we get to refine that, 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 those aspects. But we've got land partners as our town planner on board, as I mentioned, uh, TBS Architects, and we're pulling together a, uh, a quality consultant team to you know, underpin every aspect of, of the development process. Ordinarily, a code accessible DA would take uh, three months. However, because of the technical nature of this, and obviously the fact that it is um, NDIS uh, SDA, it's probably likely more to take uh, six to nine months. Uh, and thus, we've sort of allowed 12 months for that program to run its course. So obviously, as, as discussed earlier, the most important uh, yeah, milestone for us to uh, to broach right now or reach right now is the um, pre lodgement meeting with Ipswich Council, hopefully in a fortnight's time. When we, once we get the green light, we'll uh, be able to uh, accelerate the uh, the program from there. Sure. And look, I, I have no doubt, <clears throat> you know, with an election coming up and uh, with the severe pressure um, in relation to housing shortages that we'll be talking to the state government in relation to opportunities um, uh, on this as well. So. Uh, I know there has been some, uh, you know, some kind of tapping on the shoulder in relation to that as well. So um, that's not whilst not part of our strategy at the moment. We re remain alive to um, to opportunities that might present themselves in the market as well. Um, yeah, Dave. One thing I'll also uh, touch on with um, the Victorious <laughs> Foundation is that uh, as part of their other business units uh, that underpin you know, the operation, that they've even gone, you know, as far as uh, developing their own cleaning products, which uh, are concentrated and uh, are green credential. So, um, yeah, they, they're really actually trying to do you know, something good for, for the world. Uh, and it's not just a business organisation trying to you know, make money. Yes, yeah, obviously, it, it's a commercial operation underpinning that. But the, yeah, they're very passionate about, uh, about you know, leaving a mark uh, and, doing, and doing good for the community. Uh, Peter uh, McMillan, one of the directors, his wife is in full-time respite care with Huntington's disease. So it, it's a, uh, a subject very close to his heart. Yes, indeed. Um, so the development as a whole, um, uh, we have planned it to be stageable, um, easily buildable. Um, the first three towers will have the common facilities um, uh, and that will include, uh, you know, potentially some retail that may or may not be open to the public or just uh, to the people that are uh, on site. Um, uh, there will be, you know, meeting facilities for people because there's, there's going to be a wide range of people in here. This is not, um, you know, 216 uh, apartments, um, uh, you know, with, with, um, with, you know, two people per apartment and, and everybody's disabled. There will be a wide cross-section of, of people here within different categories, but all supported, um, in, in one way or another by by victorious um so you know we'll be looking to uh you know build uh, a really kind of incredible um uh place and i should say we're not building but we'll, we'll be setting up setting it up in terms of, of the planning so that it is a really attractive um uh you know place to be uh it's really quite an incredible block of land and i don't know whether we have the ability to um be able to um, plaster it on the on the screen here, uh, but nevertheless, people can have a look at it in the IM. It's on one of the slides there. Uh, the the road adjacent um, goes across the river um, on the Mogul Ferry Road. Um, the site itself uh, over twenty hectares and situated um, within about a fifty meter walk or hundred meter walk of the uh, of the railway station. So it's one of those incredible sites that has um, high accessibility. Um, uh, and uh, the views, uh, you know, most of the apartments will will face out towards the river uh, on 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 the elevated part of the site, um, and you know, it's a it's quite an incredible block of land. Yeah, you will you see the, the the plans there, Jason. Yeah, don't know how if we can blow them up. 
Um, on the right hand side, you see the site in blue um, with the railway line and the railway station is, is just off to the left. Um, so it's really only that um, when you're looking at the picture, I guess the western part of the site, which is which is elevated, and you see the houses up there. Um, um, that's the uh, portion of the site that we'll build, be building on. The uh, bottom part of the site is uh, floodplain uh, storage. We will be able to potentially uh, put some at-grade car parks uh, down and around there. Um, but as you see, it's really it's really quite a, a you know superb block of land. So. Um, David, there's 2.7 hectares of, of linear parkway down on the riverbanks that uh, will be turned into uh, recreational areas for the, um, the Ipswich Council. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know that we've only, as I said, got half an hour. So I think we've got, whilst we've got about seven minutes left, um, Jace, uh, I might get you to do a quick run through uh, what the offer is and also, I guess, um, make sure that we have enough time for questions. Thank you, Dave. Um, and we have got a couple of questions coming through, so please do feel free to um, pop in in that Q&A section at the bottom. I will also launch a poll, in a, I'll, I'll do that in a couple of minutes, but I'll launch a poll for you just to um, ask a couple of questions. You can give us an indication of your interest levels. Um, so this offer is open to wholesale investors um, via ordinary equity uh, we're offering up to 60% return on equity, uh, which, which is an IRR annualized return uh, forecasted at 40%. Um, so again, as David and Brad mentioned, it's 18 month term is the forecasted term. Um, and that'll be a pond sale to a bigger player after that estimated uh, 18 month term. The minimum investment on this offer is 10,000. And we, we do expect it to close fairly quickly. It's not a it's not a particularly large uh, capital raise compared to some of the raises we have done. So it's um, a maximum of $2 million that will go into this, this um, particular raise. If I would, I would just add, like if anybody does want to, um, you know, you're a first time investor with us and you perhaps would like to look at something a bit less than 10,000, 10, then, you know, reach out to me. I'm happy to have a look at that for you. Um, sometimes some people are more comfortable doing a little bit lower. Our average just happens to be around the fifty thousand mark, but but um, but we but we make the minimum as low as we can generally. Um, Dave, we had a question there from uh, Murphy has asked, can you please give us a use case scenario? Say if I invest a hundred thousand dollars, how will it work? Um, yeah, yeah, look, it's uh, uh, it's reasonably um, reasonably simple. So the term that we're asking the investment for is is eighteen months. Uh, we anticipate returning 60% um, return on equity. That means uh, you invest 100, you get 160 back in 18 months. Um, and as Jason said, because it's a little bit more than 12 months, the um, the IRR, the internal rate, internal rate of return uh, on that number is um, 40%. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, and all of that, Murthy, is available on the deal page link that I shared you there. Um, and in there, once you once you register, you'll be able to access the information memorandum. Actually, so it's all it's all outlined in there. Um, we have a um, an attendee has asked. Um, sorry, I say an attendee. I don't have a name, but that's okay. Estimated return from the NBIS for a, for a high physical support participant, or is it unique per individual? Does that question make sense to you, Dave? Or uh, look. It, it it does, and I don't I don't know if, uh, if we've got the numbers to hand to tell you the truth, but there are those four categories that I talked about, and there are different there are different subsidies, um, uh, you know, per per category. Uh, I just don't. Yes, I don't have them to hand. Uh, but what what the intention is that um, effectively, uh, you know, the operator is uh, victorious, so they're the ones who worry about that subsidies. We get a rent from. Victorious, or we or we we forecast a rent uh, from Victorious to uh, whoever's going to invest with us. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Yeah, um, and I'll, I'll jump in there for quickly. Um, in our recent meetings with um, BCF, we've been discussing exactly how that works and in the metrics of, of the rent, etc. And and their ideal uh, scenario and and how they operate in other developments is to register every apartment um, as full SDA. And therefore, yeah, they're getting maximum rents you know, on on the yield back because that they then choose, you know, where to put the uh, the, the users 
in the development and and it's uh, yeah every, everything's registered but they're not all, as you said not all usable in the same category so um the, the rents are as peak as they can they've also done their figures um on only uh yeah it's 20 percent of sda um and their their you know, their break even uh figures are looking at 80 percent of the uh the 216 apartments available so uh and their modeling is only at 60 percent of occupancy so yeah they're, they're being very conservative in how they project uh the, the income stream for you know the buy that we uh, eventually get the da for and look uh, you know as we said we have built it as stageable as well so it's not like we're going to build 216 and then say okay go and start to lease it from day one um you know we'll be building um potentially three of the six towers um, first up uh, and then as as the demand grows those are t other towers can be delivered uh, and once again just as a reminder you know we won't be taking the construction uh, risk on it but um, you know it, that that gives the um, let's call it the buyer of the land at the uplifted price uh, you know some some shock absorbers and and in terms of um, being able to uh, you know meet the demand and build for the demand when it when it's uh, when it's needed yeah, and I guess also uh, further to that, their current uh, book has some two and a half thousand uh, NDIS uh, customers looking for accommodation. Uh, so obviously this represents less than 10% of that need. And, and they're saying to us, can you do more of these elsewhere? And we said, yeah, okay, that's fine. Well, let's get through this process uh, and, and smooth it all out and, and go from there. But you know, I think that sort of gives way. They said that every time they advertise for new accommodation, their um their workbook or or you know, accommodation workbook increases by some five hundred people. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, there's definitely demand, isn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah. I have had three people ask the same question: um, Is the offer available for self-managed super funds? Um, it, that's that's a fairly easy question. Is is we do get a lot of self-managed super funds invested. You will just need to check your uh, trust deed and your investment strategy that it allows you to invest in this structure. Um, that it, we, we're not able to give you personal advice, we're, we're only licensed to give general advice, but if you wanted to uh, check with your uh, accountant perhaps, or if you have a look at your own investment strategy, you can, you'd can probably be able to just confirm that, that you're able to invest in these kind of structures. You can also always change those, You know, given that it's self-managed super fund, you can talk to your accountant about changing the structure about what you can and can't invest in. Um, I have, uh, we've got, we're getting close to time, but Ishvariel has asked, um, uh, will we get our, will we get back our investment in 18 months? Um, hopefully, yeah, there's some risk to every single investment you go into Ishvariel. I think it's probably, you know, good to have a good read of the IM. Hopefully Dave and Brad have given you an example of, of the timelines that we're looking to go to. There are definitely risks to that. There is no guarantee that this will uh, be done in 18 months and, um, you know, the, I think the risks are outlined in the IM as well. So let's be really honest. Yeah. Uh, look, hopefully, hopefully what we've done uh, compared to, let's call it a traditional property development, is that we've taken um, construction risk out of our part of the the transaction. We'll, we'll leave that to the next party. So what we're trying to do is uh, to effectively get rid of the approvals risk and um, uh, and then the remaining risk is being able to find the right party to, uh, you know, to buy. Yeah, and so you've managed to with Victorious, haven't you, a lot? Yeah, well, Victorious is the manager. So, so if you can think about it as uh, Victorious is the lessee. Um, so we come along with a with a with basically an approval and a, a tenant um, that is is going yeah. to pay, pay a, a, a rent. Um, so it's very much like a, a commercial building with a pre-commitment. Um, so you you might um, uh, as as I did for four hundred Queen Street, the BHP building that um, some people would know in in Queen Street, four eighty Queen Street. Uh, you know we got BHP as the anchor tenant, uh, and then as um, Grocon we went out to Dexas. Um, Dexas, uh, you know there was a bit actually left to lease in that building, but um, Dexas said, "Yep, we'll fund that through, uh, and we'll own that. Uh, we'll own that in the end." So the only difference between that transaction and this is Grocon um, sat in as the developer. It's not our current intention to sit in as the developer. If uh, the investor um, decided they wanted a developer in there, we might do that. But in any event, even if that happened, 
um, we would be transacting the land and returning that part of the investment um, as, a, as our core strategy uh, anyway. So we wouldn't be tying uh, that investment up um, in a subsequent build. Yeah, great. Thank you, Dave. Um, it looks like all the questions, are, hopefully um, I have popped the poll up there as well. I can see that some people have answered that actually. Um, it's quite a few of you. So if you wanted to answer that, please feel free to jump in um, in the last minute. But we'll I just um, sort of wrap up now. No, sorry, apologies. We've gone a couple of minutes over. Um, I don't kind of like to stop it all of a sudden when we're when somebody's in flow. Um, but thank you, Dave and Brad, for, for that. And thank you to all that attended um, tonight. I hope you found the, the webinar helpful. Um, as I mentioned earlier, and I shared a link in the chat here, we will also provide an email. We'll reach out to you over the next couple of days and we will provide you a link to the, to the deal page. Um, that does have um, uh, the information memorandum on there as well. And then we're available, my team uh, of capital managers who are licensed to give uh, general advice and talk to directly to you about this offer and answer any questions that you may have as well. So we're happy to do that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the target is $2 million. Uh, we haven't listed this publicly yet. So we, we're literally just going out privately and, and uh, having the webinar tonight. So, so this is early, but I don't really expect it to stay around too long. Um, we'll send you a recording of this webinar, uh, I'd say tomorrow uh, via email. And then, you know, if you do have any questions, you can feel free to please reach out to us. Our phone number is 1300 039655, or you can email hello at venturecrowd.com.au as well. And we'd be happy to um, answer any. Have one last question there, Dave, before we let everybody go. Warren has asked Will there be an opportunity to individually purchase one or more of the units? Oh, look, that's not the intention at the moment because we'll have an overall lessee and it's likely to be a really large kind of healthcare related uh, fund or something like that. Um, so it, it's probably unlikely unless we decided to, um, you know, raise our own fund to own it, which, I, I, you know, is not part of the current strategy. So I'd suggest if... Um, if somebody, you know, is looking at ownership of, of product, I mean, we have a no number of other things um, on our website, like Carrara, um, yeah. in in which that kind of thing is possible. Yeah, um, currently, at, um, Warren, we have a, a really nice project at Albany Creek, actually, which is which is the first stage is currently like complete and about to be registered. So they're kind of ready to go. They're quite nice town houses. So reach out to us if you if you want to learn more about those as yeah. well. And, and, and our investors do get a, a, a slight preference um, in relation to um, acquiring product that we're developing for for sale. Yeah. Thank you again, guys. Sorry, we've run over four minutes. Um, yeah, Warren, we'll reach out. Thank you. I just got a question back, but yeah, we'll reach out. I'll I'll pass those details on to um to Barbara, who who actually I can see is on the on the webinar here tonight. So she'll be happy to help you. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Have the, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you all. Thanks, Dave. See you soon. Bye.